we're with a team of private detectives. They're outside an office in central Delhi, tracking a man whose wife suspects he's cheating on her. It's a waiting game. They've been on his tail for hours already. Then, just after 10 p.m., he finally leaves his office. So that's him, yeah? Yes, that's him. The detectives follow him to a restaurant. Our subject has just stopped to my, to my right. Um, he's just getting some food to eat. They wait to see who he's meeting. They're going to stick with him all night. Hundreds of new detective agencies are springing up across India. In Delhi alone, it's estimated the number has tripled in the last decade. These private eyes say they're out to catch cheating partners, but many of their methods aren't exactly scrupulous. This is the Venus Detective Agency. It's 10 a.m. and 15 agents are working on cases. 15 others are on the streets gathering evidence. <laughs> 33-year-old Akriti Katri founded the agency six years ago. Now it has branches in five other cities across India. They have dozens of active cases that centre on one thing. Love affair. My husband is dating someone else, my wife is dating someone else. So my girlfriend is dating, my boyfriend is dating, my gay partner is dating. Akriti catches up on the latest cases coming in and decides which ones to take. The average monthly wage is around $70. But her clients are willing to pay upwards of three hundred dollars. ये भी same गुड़गांव का है घर का address नहीं पता इसलिए office से करना है और affair find करना है. गुड़गांव office से ये भी आज लगा दो. दोनों ये आज लगा दिया. They basically decide if they've got the resources, the time, the money, how much effort it will take, whether it's a case that they want to take on or not, and it's decided here what's going to happen. Lives are changed here. Akriti says her growing caseload is partly down to many young Indians deciding to go online to find partners, instead of relying on their families to arrange a marriage. A new client has arrived in the office. He doesn't want us to use his identity. We'll call him Veer. After engagement, there is no conversation Veer says his younger sister is engaged to a man she fell in love with online. He's concerned the relationship isn't what it seems. I discussed it with my known friends in the circle. So it's a bit of a hard time that he does a job. And he does a job in his own job. But he doesn't have any satisfaction now. There's no more talk about it. Yes. Veer explains he doesn't know if his sister's fiancé is faithful, how much he earns or whether he's educated. If this was a traditional arranged marriage, he'd know all of that. And we will find out where you live, where you live, where you live, where you live, where you live. Thank you. And my sister's life is what you have to do. I have to say that's um, quite intense. It's the first case I've seen up close and personal and just the emotion and, and the, the, the frustration, anger, sadness written on that guy's face is just, it's hard to convey. He was, he was nearly in tears. Time to hit the streets as Akriti heads out to do some digging. First stop, the address where Veer tells us his sister thinks her fiancé lives. So we've 
been driving for about half an hour out of the office and this is very much a different part of town. The roads are very bumpy, it's hard to get anywhere. But we're close, we're close to where the subject supposedly lives. It's run down, a building of single rooms to rent. I follow a Kriti with my phone on record. So we're just doing inquiries. And Kriti's trying to find out as much as she can. She charms the caretaker, saying she's a friend of the man, but can't remember his door number. The address he gives her checks out, Akriti's first piece of evidence. We know that he lives here, we've confirmed this. What's the next step? We need to follow and see with whom he is going. I mean, is he picking up someone on the way or how he is going? That's what we'll see through surveillance tomorrow and day after. Private detective agencies aren't regulated in India. Akriti admits they're not always honest. She and her team often use fake identities and even bribe officials. Yes, we do a couple of things which are unethical. So because you can't do everything, you know, 100% ethical. We need to do a lot many things which are not ethical. But, but don't you feel guilty? Why? I'm just taking your information. I rather enjoy doing that. <laughs> Akriti revels in her use of underhand tactics to get what she needs. As I've been spending time with Akriti on cases, I've tried to figure out exactly what is going on here. What does the law say about all this? And I can't come up with much. I don't even know if what Akriti's doing is legal or not, so I've arranged to meet with, with a lawyer who I'm hoping can tell me more about it. Hi, Gupta Ji, hi. Arpal yeah, okay. Gupta is a top lawyer specialising in privacy issues. Hi. Are you allowed to follow people, survey people, watch what they're doing, track them in India if you're just a normal citizen? We don't have a clear legal definition on what is surveillance and what are people allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. So do you mean to say that there are no laws that govern what PIs can and can't do? Yes, that would be accurate, yeah. There, there are no laws which would uh, define what PIs can do because India has not done very well on privacy and surveillance. It's becoming clear that people's private lives are fair game. These detectives rarely worry about legal action. Back in the office, there's another kind of backlash. A man is demanding money from Akriti after she failed to provide the evidence that he wanted in a case. I filmed their meeting on my phone. So what was going on? Not every person who's coming to us is a good person. So he's, he's, he's part of a gang or the local Correct. mafia? Local mafia, both. I've no idea if he's local mafia, but he's not happy with her services. For now, Akriti still lives in a one-bedroom flat with her four-year-old son, Arsh. Her mum and dad live there too. She's separated from her husband and they're getting a divorce. India has many female detectives, but Akriti's proud to be one of the few who actually owns an agency. My job is dangerous. Okay, I need to handle cops, I need to handle this, I need to handle that, I'm handling. 
Her mum, Suman, still worries about the dangers of her daughter's job. We wanted that this line was not good for our Indian people. This is a risky job. What is the mind change? Now, the children are doing the same thing. Today, the girls are working with the same thing. Because privacy laws are weak, court cases to stop detective agencies using secret filming have failed. The Venus Detective Agency often use it, especially to gather evidence for divorce cases, which are becoming more common. Akriti's team show me the latest footage from an active case. The client wants to stay anonymous, so we'll call her Anita. So you guys have been surveilling for several days. What have you got? This is when you were following her? Yes. Okay. Akriti's team suspects this is the woman having an affair with Anita's husband. They want more footage of the two of them together, so we're joining the surveillance team as they head out for another day's work. So it's about six o'clock in the morning. You can tell because there's no traffic out in Delhi for once. Um, we're on our way to the first rendezvous for the surveillance that we're doing today. I'm told the first rendezvous is where the man works. We found the exact place to park. We're far enough away, but we can sort of see the car that we're going to be marking. The investigators wait for hours with their secret cameras while we keep out of sight in our car. It's nearly midday now. It is hot. It's sweltering. It's about 33 degrees outside, 41 inside the car. and find out what's going on. So I've just spoken to the investigators. They said this is unusual. He would usually go and see his girlfriend before work, but obviously something's come up today. And now we wait again. Then, suddenly... He's in the car, he's getting ready to go in. He's turning around, he's turning around, he's turning around. The detectives stick on Anita's husband's tail. He could be meeting his mistress. We're in a car, we cannot keep up. Um, the investigators are both on bikes, so they're able to kind of just weave in and out. We finally found um, the subject. He's where the suspected other woman works. That afternoon, the detectives film for hours. Later, Akriti shows me all the video evidence they've now got on Anita's husband's affair. That's the woman? Yes. That's not his wife? No. They're getting into the car together? Yes. The footage shows the couple out shopping, driving around town, meeting at her place of work and more than once shows him entering her home. Before Akriti breaks the news to Anita, she wants to resolve the other case we're following. 
Her client, Veer, is still waiting to learn if the man his sister wants to marry after an online relationship is trustworthy. Akriti and her team have five days to find that out. Akriti's found a location that's far enough away, but close enough that we can just follow the minute we see the subject. We're outside his home again. Today, she wants to check if he's told the truth about where he works. He's not on this street. He's in yes. the street behind us. Yes. But you're confident he's coming this way because this yes. is the exit to this the main the, road? Yes. This is the only way to go out. The man gets on his motorbike and Akriti and I tail him in her car. Akriti sticks close to his bike, alert to anything that might seem out of the ordinary. Oh yeah, he's going in, yeah, I can see. He's got his pass, he's going inside the building. Just as he said, he works for a big IT company. We're adding a piece to the puzzle, adding another colour to the picture. Now we know where he lives, how he travels, and where he works. The five days of surveillance are up. Veer is nervous. His sister's future depends on what Akriti is about to tell him. This is the compiled report for the same. It, it contains a CD of the photographs and videos, along with a printout report. Thank you. Thank you. In your particular case, we didn't find much things. It's like no affair. We had found out four most important things. That he is not roaming around with any of the female. There's a lot of tension with this. Okay. I'm also happy. My family is also happy. Thank you. It's enough for Veer. He tells me the wedding's set for next month. That was good. I've spent so many days following Akriti that I'm programmed to think the worst in people. People tend to hide behind avatars on social media and behind their keyboards. You never know who anyone is. So when you see a positive outcome like this one, I mean, his smile, the weight that was lifted off his shoulders is just it's quite unexpected. So relief for Veer's family. But now, Akriti has to deliver bad news to her other client, Anita, about her husband's affair. So you have assigned this case to find your husband, whether he's roaming around with some other female or not. And uh, oh, I don't have words to tell you that Yes, we found her with a woman, and he is regularly visiting her almost every day. Sometimes he is taking her to the shopping, sometimes he is visiting her house. I can see Anita is in shock. What will you do with these evidences? I was right, and I didn't have any doubt about it. So I will go to the show and show her my husband. I've seen how getting a result is what matters to a Kriti, even if it sometimes means bending the rules. But now, I learned just how far she's prepared to go. I'm invited to listen in on a counselling session, something Akriti now offers to cheated women on top of her detective work. I'll keep it away. I don't yeah. mind it. This, she says, is Mrs. Sharma, a scorned wife. But Mrs. Sharma keeps forgetting her own name. Uh, you know, they realise I'm getting suspicious. That lady will not come. When they think the cameras are off, 
they discuss getting their story straight. I know, I know. Mr. Sharma kahe na maine, to usi sab se karma karte. Lekin phone number apna likhne kya? It's clear evidence that this whole scene is a setup. So who is this Mrs. Sharma? I checked her out to see who she is and and what she does, and it um, turns out her name isn't Mrs. Sharma, it's Mrs. Gupta. And she has a Facebook account, and she has actress credits to her name. She has been in movies as an extra, and there she is with her husband very happily together recently. I asked to meet Akriti away from her office. Did your company, did Venus, did your people no. pay for an actress? No. But why I did you easily hide Why did you things. use an actress? Why did you do this? I agree. I agree. Whatever you are saying is absolutely true. That yes, yesterday she was not Mrs. Sharma. I absolutely agree. The situation is awkward. Right. Turns out, a real client had pulled out of our filming. So Akriti, always desperate to get results, booked an actress. Akriti thinks that she can get away with anything because the law in India allows her to get away with quite a bit. With this kind of unchecked power, she doesn't know where the line is. There are signs of a backlash against the tactics some detective agencies use. There are increasing calls for them to be regulated. And this year, a female detective, who's one of Akriti's rivals, was arrested, accused of bribing police officers to get phone records. But the revolution in how young Indians date, marry and divorce means the number of India's private detectives, whatever methods they use, is certain to keep growing. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.